Yesterday, I talked about how the fiscal deficit spending has been contributing inflation and then the most aggressive rate hiking cycle done by Bank of Canada to counter the inflation is all because of the government fiscal spending. Okay, this morning we got the latest inflation data came out uh, by Tax Canada, and for the month of October, the annualized CPI reading is 3.1%, which is lower than what we saw in the month of September, which was 3.8%, right? So overall, it's good news. Uh, but, but saying that this is all done by Bank of Canada as a result of the tighter monetary policy, maybe that's not an accurate statement. Why? Because when we look at the core inflation, which is excluding food and energy, that is still up compared to last month. And if you look at the month over month reading as well, that is still up compared to last month. So what is driving this reduction in the CPI overall? The answer is oil prices. So oil prices have come down significantly across the global markets, which is causing the reduction in the gas prices at the pump in this country as well, which is why we're seeing a big reduction in the overall CPI reading. But the core inflation is still up. And when you look at what is driving the core inflation up, uh, that is uh, the shelter and the food prices, right? So the food prices is still in the high range of 5%. The shelter price is still up in the 6.1%. So both of these uh, buckets are still high compared to uh, what used to be a acceptable range. Uh, a lot of people are saying that shelter pricing contains the interest payment, which is why we are seeing the uptick in the shelter pricing. If you remove that, then the the CPI rating is way way under the target range of two to three percent. Yes, you're right. Uh, but the things which are driving overall inflation is also out of Bank of Canada's control, like oil prices. If that goes up next month because something happens in the global market, then we're back to square one. So inflation is basically a combination of different uh, you know, goods and services. And most of those goods and services are not really under Bank of Canada's control. Bank of Canada can only influence the debt, which has been contracting. So when we look at this chart that shows you the overall new mortgage initiations, right, which is uh, pretty much very low compared to uh, going back all the way to 2001. So the debt market is contracting from a consumer perspective because it's very difficult to afford debt these, these days, uh, which is of course driving the new home sales uh, as well as car sales and anything that is purchased on debt. Okay, so people are deleveraging in that sense. So, but things like food and energy uh, and services, which is outside of Bank of Canada's control, it is still up. Okay, and when we look at what Christia Freeland announced this afternoon with regards to overall uh, economic plan, she announced another $20.8 billion of net new spending for the next six years. So when you look at the overall deficit spending, it's growing, right? So we are already at $40 billion of deficit spending this year, which is going to continue even in 2028, 2029. So there's no line of sight in terms of when and how we are going to balance it out. Okay, so based upon my yesterday's video, as we run fiscal deficit spending, these are all inflationary pressures in the economy, which is going to keep the overall inflation number up and which will continue pushing Bank of Canada to keep the interest rate up as well. Because when we look at this chart, that shows you since February, we have been seeing positive real rates in this country since 2008 okay and positive real rates is basically the difference between the nominal rates and the inflation rate so if you don't have positive interest rate that means the savers are at a disadvantage so they won't be saving money anymore so this will drive more spending and hence more inflationary pressures in the in the economy. So when you have these um, positive real rates, this is going to incentivize the savers to save more money than spend, okay? Uh, we have to keep these rates as positive because otherwise this is going to be inflationary again. So as soon as, let's say, something happened and these real rates becomes negative again, which is going to be an inflationary signal, and the savers will then no more save money, they will start continue spending it or investing it 
uh, in other uh, asset classes or other consumable products, which is going to uh, continue the inflationary pressures in the economy. So all of this is not painting a good picture for Canadians because that means over the long run, at least six to seven years, we will continue to see inflationary pressures because of all these policies from the government as well as the geopolitical situation outside of Canada, which is outside of government and Bank of Canada's control, which is going to keep the inflationary pressures up, and which is why I believe there is no case for rate cuts, even next year, right? Because if you're seeing the other buckets of inflation uh, basket still up, and only the, the fuel prices is coming down, which is outside of Bank of Canada's control, then why do you think the rate should come down? I don't see how this is going to play out because the system is flooded with a lot of malinvestment and uh, misallocation of resources. And in order to fix that, you have to flush the system. In, in order to flush the system, you have to keep the rates at this level. Yes, it will hurt a lot of people, but it will try to bring things on the track over the long run. Otherwise, we will continue to see our currency is going to devalue against US dollar because as we run more and more fiscal deficit, it is going to uh, keep the inflationary pressures up, which means the Bank of Canada has to balance out in terms of how they're going to uh, keep the rates at this level or reduce it or increase it, which is ultimately going to impact our currency in the global markets. Uh, as well. So anyway, this is just my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Put your comments down below and I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe.